Pay close attention to what I'm about to show you. What you just saw was a 900 kilogram J Dam bomb dropped from an F 35 during a training mission. The footage was filmed from four kilometers away, and from that distance, it's hard to truly grasp what happened. I know. You want to see it closer, don't you? Here's a J Dam being dropped on Taliban positions in Afghanistan. Watch the reaction of the American soldiers. They know exactly what's coming. To really understand the destructive power of this weapon, let me show you a J Dam up close, this time hitting an ammunition factory that was completely empty. This is the weapon that changed the rules of war in Ukraine, because a single bomb like this, launched from a Soviet-era fighter jet built in the 1980s, didn't just destroy a strategic Russian bridge, it did something no one thought possible. It forced Russia's most advanced air defense system into an impossible choice. Two options, both ending in defeat. How did an American bomb, dropped from a Soviet jet, manage to put Russia's military pride in checkmate? The answer will surprise you. To understand how this became possible, we need to go back to an attack that took place in July this year. The target, a bridge of immense strategic importance in the Zaporizhia region. This wasn't just another concrete structure lost in the middle of Ukraine. It was much more than that, the backbone that kept Russia's entire southern military operation alive. Think of it like a main artery in your body, cut it, and everything beyond it shuts down. That's exactly what happened. Every day, 230 vehicles crossed that bridge, 230. One third carried ammunition directly to Russian front lines. The rest hauled fuel and food, the lifeblood of any army. But here's a detail few people know. The bridge wasn't just a passage. It concealed something far more valuable. Behind it, on the eastern bank, sat the secret logistics center of Russia's 35th Army Corps, a command and control hub hidden. Within the fog of war caused by constant vehicle movement in the area, the Russians believed they were safe there. But as you'll soon see, they were terribly wrong. Ukraine's choice of target wasn't random. It was surgical. Ukrainian intelligence identified what the military calls a choke point, a place where multiple critical supply lines converge. Destroy that point, and you don't just sever a road, you cut off the oxygen of an entire operation. Now, let's talk about the strike itself. How did Ukraine manage to turn a 1980s fighter jet into a modern precision attack platform? Here's where the pieces connect, a story of ingenuity that's nothing short of remarkable. Take a good look at this aircraft. You're seeing a MiG-29, a Soviet fighter and the JDAM ER bomb we mentioned earlier. That bomb is American, and in theory, the two were never meant to work together. It's like trying to plug a USB cable into an old television. It just doesn't fit. Their systems are completely incompatible. But Ukrainian engineers took creativity to its absolute limits. They built a special adaptation kit, a pylon, the support that holds bombs beneath the aircraft. They modified this pylon by adding a conical extension at the front of the bomb, and inside that cone they installed a dedicated GPS antenna. That small change allowed the American bomb to receive precise satellite data, even when carried by a jet that was never designed for it. And that's not all. The Ukrainian pilot can now view NATO weapon range and targeting, data directly on a screen in the cockpit. A simple modification, but a brilliant one. And the result? Ukraine now has a bomb that can glide over 70 kilometers and hit its target with just a five meter margin of error. In an instant, a Soviet fighter jet from the 1980s became a modern long range strike platform. And that created a massive problem for Russia. But the bridge strike wasn't as simple as it sounds. It was the outcome of a brilliant tactical operation that placed Russia in a very tight corner. And this is where the story gets truly interesting. Weeks before the attack, Ukraine launched a systematic campaign to clear the skies. Russian Buk M2 air defense systems, each with a radar range of 45 kilometers, were detected and neutralized one by one. Some were destroyed in direct strikes. Others were blinded through electronic warfare. It was like switching off the alarms before breaking in. And the real masterstroke came next with the S-400. 
the pride of Russia's air defense. In this operation, the Ukrainians showed a deep understanding of military psychology. They created what experts call forcing a stalemate. Imagine a chess game where every possible move your opponent makes ends in loss. The Ukrainian MiG launched JDAM ER bombs from within an area protected by Ukrainian Patriot batteries. When the bombs began gliding toward the bridge, the Russian S-400 system detected them. Now, the Russians faced a tough dilemma. To intercept the bombs and save the bridge, the S-400 would have to activate its engagement radar. But the moment it did, its location would be instantly detected by the Patriot systems, which were waiting for exactly that signal. The Russian commander had to choose, activate the radar, save the bridge, and risk losing his valuable S-400 system, or stay silent, preserve the system, and watch the bridge be destroyed. He chose survival. The S-400 stayed quiet, it didn't fire, and the bridge collapsed. It was a perfect tactical checkmate. Ukraine had turned its air defense network into an offensive trap. The consequences of that explosion went far beyond what anyone expected. The wall. First thing that happened was instant logistical chaos. All traffic that depended on the bridge was forced to take a 160-kilometer detour. That's a lot. Imagine having to take a detour that long every day just to get to work. Now, imagine doing it with fuel trucks. The alternative route went through Berdyansk, a narrow strip of land that turns to mud during the summer rains. Now picture their situation. Heavy trucks getting stuck, fuel consumption nearly doubling, travel times tripling. It wasn't just inconvenient. It was the collapse of an entire system. The numbers were staggering. The fuel meant for Russian tanks was being burned just to reach them. BMP-3. Armored vehicles went without resupply. Command realized it could no longer reinforce positions in Mariupol. And do you know what Russia's response was? They decided to use air transport, IL-76 aircraft, to carry spare parts and emergency ammunition. But that created two new problems. First, each ton transported by plane costs three times more than by truck. Second, large and slow targets like the IL-76 are extremely easy to detect and shoot down. But the chaos didn't stop there. The bridge was also a vital artery for civilian supply. Refrigerated trucks carrying food from Donbass to Crimea were forced onto the same on a 60-kilometer detour. Fuel consumption skyrocketed. Logistics. Companies began reporting losses and billing the government, demanding at least an 18% price increase in Crimea. Otherwise, they couldn't cover their costs. Think about that. A single precision strike was creating economic instability across an entire occupied region. Russia's response was pure panic. With the bridge gone, they urgently needed to protect the remaining alternative routes. Su-30 fighters were sent to patrol the line between Vasilivka and Melitopol, the same area where the convoys were now being rerouted. But there was a problem. To avoid entering the range of Patriot missiles, those fighters had to fly below 4,000 meters. That drastically limited their field of view and attack capability. In other words, they were flying patrols, but without posing any real threat. As a result, the valuable S-400 batteries were scattered chaotically, deployed on temporary ramps, constantly moving to avoid destruction. But that mobility came at a cost. The radars could no longer operate at their ideal altitude, which greatly reduced their performance. In another desperate move, the Russians began using chemical masking systems to disrupt JDAM targeting, but that ended up hindering their own ground coordination. They also rushed to integrate electronic jammers into their Su-30s, but the software wasn't ready. It wouldn't be operational for months. In other words, they were left exposed and vulnerable for a long time. And here's the part that's probably keeping Russian commanders awake at night. That was only the beginning. Ukraine now has more than 18 MiG-29 fighters equipped with the capability to carry JDAM ER bombs. Thanks to new pylon adapters, each aircraft can now carry two bombs per mission. That creates a multiplying effect, more destruction with fewer flights, and there's more. The Pentagon has committed to delivering 900 additional JDAM ER kits by the end of 2025. These are no longer isolated attacks. This is a planned, sustained campaign. Ukraine already has its next targets lined up. 
Among them are the suspension towers of the Kerch Bridge, the personal symbol of Putin's imperial project, and the Mariupol Railway Viaduct, a critical artery for resupplying forces in the east. The strategy is clear. Attack one bridge per week until the Russians realize that not even the prized Kerch Bridge is safe. This isn't just physical destruction, it's psychological warfare. It's about showing that no part of Russia's logistics network in Ukraine is safe, that their presence in the South is becoming increasingly unsustainable. This is the new art of war, intelligence and precision, outperforming brute force and outdated methods. A single GPS coordinate can change the fate of an entire front, and as this attack demonstrated, sometimes destroying one bridge is enough to immobilize an entire brigade. The bridge we mentioned at the beginning of the video was just the first domino to fall. The real war isn't in the trenches, it's in the supply lines. And in that war, Ukraine has just proven it has the right weapon to win. Now I want to hear your opinion. Do you think this strategy of targeting logistics infrastructure is more effective than direct frontline combat? Leave your thoughts in the comments. If you found this content useful, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss upcoming videos. And if you found it interesting, share it with your friends. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.